Hello everybody and today we will be talking about telephone call, your phone call or your handheld phone, your mobile phone. One telephone call can make big difference between losing money or making big money or succeeding in your business or failing or solving an issue whether it's a social issue or family life issue or community issue whether it's uh, this issue is uh, solved or not solved or uh, whether the, fa the manufacturing line uh, is stopped or continue to manufacture and talking about manufacturing actually I have an anecdote which is very important story that everybody every engineer every manager need to listen to so if you are a manager, if you are an engineer, if you are a design engineer like myself, or if you are software pro programmer or hardware designer, so stay tuned. I have very important for information to give to you, managers, uh, uh, CEOs, and the rest, like, uh, like all of those things, okay? Uh, back in uh, the mid-90s, I was working in company in Florida. And uh, I was in charge of designing uh, hardware uh, and writing software code, actually, for a security company. And uh, one of my designs, actually, I designed uh, as a security product. It has a motor. It's a motorized security product. Uh, and uh, I selected the motor. I designed the circuit. I wrote the software, the firmware for this product, and it was working perfect. And uh, I, I selected a motor that worked with uh, my design because I am the designer. So I created the system and I know how, how the system works. So this is why the company uh, uh, recruited me to do those kind of designs, coding and selection, component selection. So I selected the, the motor and uh, we tested it. Everything uh, was going fine. And the uh, production line was on and uh, the, the units were pro uh, produced over and over non-stop. The company was happy. The management was happy. I was very happy. Uh, my team was very happy. Everything was wo going wonderful. And we had a factory, a manufacturing facility located in uh, Puerto Rico. That's located actually uh, south, like uh, south of Florida in USA. Because I, at that time I was working in Florida, okay, uh, in in a fire and security company. So bottom line, uh, like long time have gone through, and everybody was happy from the product which I designed. Everything was uh, customers were happy. All of a sudden, we received a, a telephone call from Puerto Rico, the, where the factory uh, is located. The, the factory of Florida, the company where I was working in, uh, uh, the company was located in Florida, but you know, the manufacturing uh, company, the manufacturing facility was located in Puerto Rico. So like uh, our engineering team had to travel from Florida to Puerto Rico, do the settings, do the, uh, uh, give, give the uh, uh, workers there in Puerto Rico instructions on how to, do testing, how to do assembly, how to do, uh, 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 you know, like how to set up the f uh, fixtures, how to, to put parts together, how to test the product, how to follow the procedure, how to do the checkpoints and things like that. Of course, I've done a lot of documentation, not only for design, but for manufacturing and testing. So we, we, we got a telephone call from Puerto Rico. Hey guys, uh, the factory, the manufacturing line uh, stopped. Then the, my manager said, what, what happened? They said, we don't know. All, all of a sudden, the units which you designed in Florida are, are not working. We made a bunch of them and they are not working. So, so uh, my manager called me. He said, uh, Firas, you know, uh, we, need, we need you to go to uh, Puerto Rico. We need you to fly to Puerto Rico by airplane immediately and look at the, the manufacturing line, why the manufacturing is not working. So I went there to Puerto Rico. I took uh, an engineer uh, with me. He is a mechanical engineer. As you know, I'm electrical. Uh, I'm software hardware programmer. I'm an engineer. I do I design embedded systems. 
So I took that mechanical engineer just to help me with mechanical th uh, things in case, because that was a motor. So, you know, motors uh, are, are um, it's motorized, motorized design. My design was um, like a mechatronic or mechanical electronic. So I, that's why I took uh, that mechanical engineer with me to Puerto Rico. So we took the flight airplane to from Florida to Puerto Rico. We arrived there. I went to factory. I asked the supervisor of the fa manufacturing facility, uh, sh so show me exactly what's going on. So he took me to the assembly line. He took me to testing units. He took me to... He sh I told him, I want to see the, the procedure. I want to make sure that the procedures which I have written for you guys to follow, I want to look at the procedures. Uh, I looked at the procedures, everything was fine. The programming was fine, everything was fine. Uh, then everybody was pulling hair and uh, like it was like total, uh, like the environment, the nervousness was dominating the whole factory. So so I called the, the, uh, the supervisor, I told him, uh, he is from Puerto Rico. Uh, would you show me the bill of material uh, you, you are using? He said, yeah, he gave me the bill of, bill of material. So I took the bill of material. Uh, we call it BOM. Uh, BOM is, is, is not a good word because, you know, in the airport, they don't like the word BOM. So I avoid to you saying BOM. I just say bill of material. So the bill of material uh, was exactly similar to what I sent to them by, uh, by email. So then I... I took one of the units, sample units, which failed the testing. And I looked, I, I, I was flipping the unit around. Then all of a sudden I, I tilted the unit. Oh my God, this motor is not the motor which I specified. I called the supervisor. I told him, sir, come here, you know, look at the bill of material. My bill of material is saying such and such for the motor specification. Who authorized you guys to use different motors than the one which I specified? He said, um, I don't know who did that. You know, I said, uh, guys, please uh, don't change my design because I am the designer. If you want to make any changes, then please talk to me first. You have, you have a uh, telephone, right? He said, yeah, we have telephone. I said, uh, if you want to make any changes, in case you want to make any changes, you have to have good reason. You don't just make ch changes because uh, because you you want to make changes, uh, or or because you want to involve third party third party to make money, and take advantage of this project to make pro money, uh, uh, secret money, which is like a it's a, it's, it's like a, uh, it's it's like a, um, it's illegal money. Like in those cases. Uh, People sometimes they, they change the vendor of the parts. So because the vendors are their friends, so they want to make money instead of vendor A, which like say, say for example, I specified vendor A, right? So they go to vendor B, hoping that vendor B, their friends in vendor B will make money. So they split the money and, and the, the parts uh, are also more expensive. Bottom line, they change the motor without Consulting with me, they cannot do that. Legally, ethically, they are not allowed to do that because I am the, it's like, it's, for example, say you are driving a six cylinder or eight cylinder car, and then uh, all the tires of the car are specified for eight cylinders car, right? So all of a sudden you want to change one of the tires with uh, a, a truck tire or four cylinder uh, tire. Uh, four cylinder car tire you can't do that you have to use you have to use uh, tires uh, for eight cylinder cars spe specific for to uh, eight uh, cylinder you cannot use uh, 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 tires uh, like four uh, four cylinder tires on an eight cylinder car you cannot do that so that guy he made he made his own uh, like those somebody in Puerto Rico actually they in the manufacturing facility they made their own decision to switch vendor from my, the vendor I specify to their vendor. So bottom line, they used the wrong motor, which is uh, uh, contradicting to the motor I specified. There were many different issues. Uh, among the, the very uh, big issues were that the motor specifications 
motor specifications are specified in size in electrical parameters like electrical means the voltage specifications maximum voltage allowed and uh, the current specifications it means current times voltage is power so those are called power specifications and also there is uh, another very critical specification for motor is called torque torque for example if you have this motor when it rotates it exerts it exert force so so this my finger here when the motor this is the axis of the motor when the motor rotate it it applies force on here this is called a uh, pound per inch it means how much force at this distance of the shaft of the motor will be exerted when the motor linearly move one inch so there is force okay so there is length here inch uh, how many inch and how much force at this point away from this is x so this is the the uh, uh, axis of the motor uh, the center of the rotation and this is the lever and this is the end point the use usable point say this is two inch so and and here you have for example 0.2 pounds so that's what's called actually pound inch so those guys uh, selected the right pound inch but the power specification was wrong actually they they selected a motor because it was cheaper they selected a cheaper motor than the one i specified because it has it had uh, more power specifications like for example my motor which i selected uh, uh, was specified at two watts but they selected motor specified at four watts so that means you have to give them uh, you have to give the motor more power in order to work but it didn't work why because they don't know how to select motors so they think just uh, use, use any motor and put it inside the uh, security unit and the mo the unit works no that's not how not how, how it works we we everybody knows that i pass them the information i pass them the assembly instruction the the uh, bill of material, the, the specifications, mechanical and electrical uh, specifications of the units, including the motor. They, they are very well aware of the uh, motor part number. They are very well aware about the torque, uh, like the pound inch of the motor. We're very well aware about the uh, power, uh, voltage and current specification of the motor. But they chosen to go beyond their uh, authority and select their own motor because they want to do that while bypassing my authority because i am the one who authorized parts for the uh, for for uh, for the uh, design you cannot go you can you cannot uh, you cannot deviate from specifications assigned by the engineer in this case i am the designer no one has the right to select parts which are uh, uh, dev deviating from my specification and they did that so what happened when the units were completely assembled the motor refused to work and i told them this this motor guide is not designed for this uh, uh, device who selected this motor everybody was shining away not me not me not me not me i said uh, I want to know who specified, just tell me who specified this motor. So they said that gentleman there in Puerto Rico, one of the managers in Puerto Rico who selected this motor. I, told, I went to his office. I told him, sir, uh, did you know that this motor is specified for four watts? He said, no. I told him, how did you select the motor then? He said, because it's cheaper. I said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. He selected a motor because it's cheaper. So, so I, I couldn't believe that. I told him, sir, we don't use parts in the design because they are cheaper. Okay. So I told him, I, I was explaining, I gave him very brief uh, a lecture about motors, how they work, that if a motor is specified at two watts and it works on 12 volts, and this certain amount of power, you cannot use uh, an eight watt uh, motor or four watt motor. He said, oh, really? I said, yeah, really? I, I told him, are you engineer? He said, no, I'm not engineer. I told him, what background? Yeah, 
He said, I have background only in management. I told him, sir, you know, engineers, they, they know the best about those kind of things. Please, next time, before you make your own decision, talk to me. Do you have a telephone? He said, yeah, we have. I told him, just give me a telephone call. If you called me just two minutes over the phone and better, just ask me to come to, to go down to Puerto Rico from Florida and I will help you make a better selection. I told him, look now, now the, the whole factory is, is shut down because, because you made a wrong dis, uh, uh, decision. You selected the wrong motor without consulting me. Now the, the, the manufacturing line is shut down because of uh, this decision. How much money will, will, will uh, cost you to give me a telephone call? He said maybe uh, half dollar or so. I told him, you know how much, how many thousands, how much thousands of dollars we have lost because you 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 chosen to save fifty cents uh, telephone call. He sat back. He didn't say anything. The moral of the story, guys. The moral of the story. First, consult with the people who are expert in the area you want to to work with in this case i am the expert i am the expert at designing motor robots and uh, uh, electromechanical things i am the expert in embedded design don't consult a, a manager who knows nothing about motors and about electronics about programming uh, don't consult with those kind of people who know nothing uh, all what they know is this is cheap and this is uh, not cheap Sheep is not the criteria we engineers go by. We go by what works. If we want to go by what is cheap, then the whole company will shut down. He say, "Oh, I am sorry. We we didn't mean." I told him, "I know." I told him, "Don't worry. I I am here. I came from Florida to Puerto Rico to help you guys. Don't worry." So I immediately called my manager in Florida. I told him, "Mr. Such and Such." Uh, I told him the story. Those guys in Puerto Rico in the factory, they selected uh, they somebody who know nothing about electronics. He he selected a, a motor different from the motor I specified because he has good intention. He is saving money, but he didn't. Uh, he I asked him. I asked my manager. Did those guys in Puerto Rico uh, call you? He said no. Uh, did did they ever send you an email or letter or did they talk to you uh, over the phone telling you that we are uh, uh, buying different motor than the motor which Firas specified for this system? He say no. So my manager immediately called them. He said, "Why? Wh how? How can you change this motor uh, for our design?" They have no answer. They say we want we want to save money. They want to save money, and then the whole factory shut down. Because they manufacture too many units. Now all of those units, they have the wrong motor. Now in order to remove this motor and put uh, the right one, which I specified, is going to take a lot of time. This means labor. Now we, we lose labor. We lose the time of testing. We, we lose the time of packaging because you have to open the plastic package. You have to... Uh, 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 you have do, to to uh, to remove the wires and put the wires back. It's very cumbersome process. So the bottom line, always ask people who are expert at, in the area you want to, to, do, uh, to do work or business with, number one. Number two, it takes one minute only to, to uh, give the expert a telephone call and consult with them. Firas, can I change this motor with this or not? And then I say yes or no. Finish. Hang up and continue. Don't make your, your own decisions without asking the experts, please. And thirdly, when you make mistakes, say, I am sorry. Don't blame others. If you make mistake and you know it, don't try to hide. Don't try to run away and, uh, and blame others, for God's sake. Character, we need good character in, in at workplace. We need good characters. We need skilled professionals like myself who fear God, who fear God in the company. But uh, sadly, no one fear God in, in USA. No one. No one cares. No one cares. 
I took my time off. I went, I left the company in Florida. I went down to Puerto Rico just to fix this problem. It took me one full day because I was very busy in the, in the company in, in Florida. They wasted my time. They wasted the time of the factory. They wasted the time of the managers. Uh, and, and they spread tension. Everybody was tense. Because, because shutting down the, the factory or shutting down the manufacturing line is something big, very serious. It, 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 this makes the difference between, uh, uh, between losing money and making money. So supervisors of, factory, of factories, they should think. They shouldn't make, uh, uh, they always should consult with professionals. They should make wise decisions. They should not make decisions on their own. They should consult people. They could have came down, came to us down from Puerto Rico to, to Florida and they, they, they talked to us that, hey guys, we want to make a change. We want to save money uh, for some reason, right? Can we do this or not, or not? Then I give them an option. I, told, I tell them, you have this option, this option and that, that option. And they all work. But they didn't do that. Why? Because it's ethics. It's ethics. It's, it's uh, moral values. It's ethics. And it's, it's having the character, the good character and good conduct. And to know what, what can be done, what cannot be done, what is right and what is wrong. We cannot do things just because we want to do them. We have to do them because they must be done. Not, not because we, we need... To, we, we want to do them. If it is right, we will do it. If it is not, not right, we will not do it. So I hope, I hope, uh, uh, I hope that, that this, uh, uh, this uh, story uh, has benefited you guys and learn, always learn to consult with the experts and don't be shy. Don't be ashamed to, uh, to uh, give call, uh, give an expert an, a, co a call and ask them, ask her or him, whether I can do this or not, it doesn't hurt you. No one is going to beat you guys. Just uh, uh, give them a telephone call and tell them, what do you think? Should I do this or do that? It doesn't hurt you. Open your heart, open your mind and, and don't, don't stress yourself. Don't stress others. Uh, open your heart and think always, think, am I doing the right thing or not? For me, from the moment I wake up from my bed, I'm thinking what I am thinking about now. I'm thinking and I'm asking myself what I am thinking about right now. Or I'm thinking about making this video. Or I'm thinking about uh, preparing to go to sleep. Or I'm thinking about studying. I'm thinking to do a programming. Uh, I'm thinking about a pointer in my software. I'm writing software. I'm thinking about a pointer, how to extract a text. Say, for example, from a, a, from a function. I'm thinking about how to hook a motor, how to how to do the motor drivers uh, and how to test the circuits, how to do the, the Bluetooth circuit, how the wine. I'm thinking, I'm always asking my, myself what I am thinking about. Am I thinking with the right thing or wrong thing? I correct myself. If I'm thinking about the wrong thing, let's say it's Firas, change your thinking. I, what are you doing? I ask myself, what am I, what am I doing right now? Every moment, every moment, what am I doing? Am I doing the right thing or wrong thing? I immediately change. So I, I urge you guys to all follow my way. Always ask your, yourself, am I doing the right thing or the wrong thing? I hope you guys have benefited from this video. Please like and share and spread the word. And please make sure to always ask the, the experts. The, the people who are specialized in what you want to do because nothing will uh, nothing wrong will happen no no one is gonna hurt you so always refer back to the experts thank you very much for watching you have a wonderful weekend